Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games on Quick Hot Fix. Today, we are, show or I guess this evening, we are showcasing some Souls games. Before we get into it, just a quick reminder, Sonic and the Sidekicks is coming up June 1st and 2nd. So if you speedrun a game with any of Sonic's friends in it, you can use exclamation Sonic in chat for more information. With all that said, we have Elden Ring up next. Or now, I guess. I'll hand it over to the runner commentary, let everybody introduce themselves. Hello, everybody. Welcome to GDQ Outfix. I am Blanks. I am an Elden Ring speedrunner. I run 80% glitchless, and I am currently holding seventh place on the leaderboard. I formerly held record. Um, I'm joined here by my commentator, Mitch Riz. So please introduce yourself, Mitch. Hey, I'm Mitch Riz. Uh, I also speedrun Elden Ring any percent glitchless. I've never been uh, quite so high on the leaderboard as Blanks has been, but I've, you know, I've done decently for myself, held a world record in some of the more glitched categories, and I do other games like Sekiro, Lies of P, other Souls-like stuff, but uh, yeah, here to help out Blanks with the commentary. Yeah, thank you very much for showing up, Mitch. Um, the run here is going to be about just over, I want to say, an hour, maybe an hour and ten minutes. Let's see how the strats go. Um, I am ready, though, to give a countdown, if you guys are ready. Yep, we're all set. All right, uh, we will start uh, from five, four, three, two, one, and go. All right, so starting out here, we are going to start in the Chapel of Anticipation. It is the starting location for every Elden Ring speedrun. It's a little tutorial area that takes, you know, just under 40 seconds to complete. We're going to start out. We're going to load in. We're going to toggle to our shield, grab this finger, which we apparently need to open the door for some reason. We're going to take off go. our arrows and we are going to equip our bow for the first little tech of the run. It's called a bow cancel. We're going to jump up on this platform right here. And we're going to try to two end our bow in midair. We did hit it. The idea nice. behind a bow cancel is to cancel the falling animation. Um, so yeah, Mitch, you want to give us a little background on the run, I guess, while I uh, get this little starting running check going? Ooh, the run as a whole? Uh, it's gone through a lot of different things since uh, the start of uh, Elden Ring. Basically, we early on figured out that the most important thing is being able to get a powerful weapon and being able to upgrade it early. Unsurprising, of course. Um, with the big open world of it, we looked around for a lot of powerful weapons that we could get early, and we found that one that was kind of directly on the route that we needed was the Serpent Hunter. Um, so the Serpent Hunter is especially good as a weapon because it has a somber stone upgrade requirement. There's two different types of upgrade materials in the game. There's regular smithing stones and somber smithing stones, and somber ones are a lot easier to get the ones that you need a lot earlier. So that was the route for a very, very long time until eventually someone sort of theorized, okay, what if we shook up the entire route, took an entirely different path to get into the end game, and instead used a different weapon called the Bloodhound's Fang instead? So that has been the meta now for about a year, I think, is, is pretty much a year when it was. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so now the entire route is basically we need to separately do a few things. We need to get our weapon. We need to get our upgrade materials and we need to get runes in order to upgrade it. And then lastly, we need to be able to get access to the capital. So those are basically all the different things that we're going to be doing. Not necessarily in that order, but those are our four orders of business before we can kind of cruise through the rest of the game. Yeah. So well said, Mitch. That's basically an overview of the run as a whole. Um, we are going to head into the Church of Ella. We're going to stop at Kale. We need to purchase a couple items for the run. We need some supplies. We're going to grab 11 throwing daggers and the crafting kit. I will explain what the throwing daggers do later, but the crafting kit allows us to craft multiple various different items in the game. The only thing we really care about, though, are uh, bleed grease, which is kind of like the pine resin equivalent in Dark Souls 1, 2, 3. Um, the idea here is we're going to pick up these root resins, these uh, little pickups on the ground here. Uh, we want at least four, but I am going to, however, grab as many as I possibly can because in a no reset setting, um, we're going to need to have as many consumables as possible in case of any kind of, uh, you know, unwarranted events happening. Um, the goal here is basically to get to this gate front grace. We need to unlock the, uh, the horse. We need to unlock torrent for the run. He's very, very important, obviously, because he is way faster than our normal running speed. Um, so we are going to be resting here. We're going to trigger the scripted uh, nighttime appearance of our maiden for the run, Melina. And she is going to give us our Honda Accord, a.k.a. Torrent. Um, and yeah, as as Mitch said, our goal is to 
kind of complete this objective of getting to the Altus Plateau as quick as possible. Our objective is to grab two halves of the Dectus Medallion, so we can go ahead and we can head towards the Grand Lift of Dectus, which will get us to like the midpoint in the game around the Altus Plateau. Um, so yeah, going to be riding our horse here down into this ruin, the uh, Dragon Burnt Ruins. It has a chest in it, but has a surprise for us. When you open up the chest, it'll actually... Uh, there will be no weapon inside or no kind of equipment. It'll instead uh, spew out this kind of smoke and we will be teleported over to a later game area. Um, so I don't know, Mitch, you want to give us a little background on... Uh, oh, well, i dodging some rats here. Hopefully we don't get stun locked. Okay. You want to give us a little background here on what's kind of the goal of uh, getting these medallion pieces and how it kind of uh, is faster in a way uh, than, the, than the old traditional route of doing these runs yeah absolutely so yeah basically in order to get to the altus plateau which is kind of the mid game area so you're you're kind of locked into a few early game areas until you get access to the altus plateau that gets you into the mid game areas so there are a few ways to do this the common two uh actually the common three i guess you could say are getting the dectus medallions which lets you take the dectus lift up there is then getting abducted into the Volcano Manor, and from Volcano Manor, you can just exit directly out into Altus Plateau. And the third is there's just kind of a direct path up the mountain up to Altus, um, but that path is particularly long and slow, and there's a boss at the end to kill, so that one's never really been viable. We used to go through the Volcano Manor, which was actually pretty quick, honestly, all things considered. Um, but, coming up here, we do have a skip. I will let you finish that in a minute. Um, we do have what's called Celia skip coming up. I'm going to be timing a few jumps on Torrent. I'm going to be climbing up these branches very, very carefully. That is Celia skip. It did go by quickly, but here is another skip here. It's called Ball skip. We're going to skip the two rolling boulders that would then be rolling onto your face, which you would not want. So we're going to be doing a little bit more parkour here. Um, so yeah, sorry to cut you off there, but that is the first real skip of the run. But yeah, Mitch, you can go ahead and you can finish your thought there while I rest in this grace. We're going to be teleporting to the round table hold for the first time. We need to untrap ourselves from Kaled, and doing so, we will also be sent to the round table hold. So yeah, Mitch, finish your thought, please, on uh, the last route to uh, the Altus Plateau. Yeah, I, actually, I kind of forgot that that route skips the uh, the balls there. I, I've just always gone up that branch. It just seemed like such a normal way to get up. But uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, we used to go through Volcano Manor, which got us the Serpent Hunter kind of as a as a byproduct of that. We got to go into the Volcano Manor, which got us Serpent Hunter, and then immediately out into Altus. It was pretty quick, but we basically found that instead we can grab the Dectus Medallions, which both of them are a little bit out of the way, but actually not too far out of the way from where we want to go anyway to get some of our upgrade materials and to get our weapon that we want. And so we can basically just go directly up to Altus without having to take any detour through Volcano Manor again. It ends up being um, a couple minutes faster in total through the route overall. Yeah, so that's kind of like the, the main reason. We wanted to give a little bit of background on uh, this routing change that did go through around la this time last year. Because some of you that may have, you know, taken a break from watching these speedruns or haven't really seen it in a while, or just seeing it for the first time and curious what the fastest route through the game is, we figured out that the Dectus route is just a couple minutes faster because pretty much everything you need for the run is on the way, surprisingly enough. We're going to be picking up the uh, the right half of the medallion here in Fort Faroth, as well as a important talisman for the run. So everything kind of works out so that we can, um, you know, on route, pick up these very, very useful components of the run. Um, the Serpent Hunter route, it, it's very, very strong. The only downside is the long setup time. We do enter the capital around two minutes quicker on this route. Um, so yeah, just gonna be running through the fort here and we're going to be doing another bow cancel and we'll be on our way to the Radagon Sword Seal, which is going to give us plus five. Gonna pick up, I'm gonna pick up a quick rune here, sorry. Um, it's gonna give us plus five to each of our combat stats, those being strength, dexterity, health, and endurance. So there it is. There's the Radagon Sword Seal. And then I'll be warping back to the first step, and we're going to be on our way towards the left half of the Dex Medallion, in, located in Fort Height, which is back in Limgrave. Yes, along the way, we're going to grab a uh, Grace that we're going to be using a little bit later in order to get our actual weapon for the run, the uh, Bloodhound's Fang. 
but yeah, basically we're we're just accomplishing those goals of collecting our weapon and starting to get access into that mid-game area of Altus Plateau. Yeah. Normally, what you would be going... doing. Oh, sorry, you first. Oh, I was gonna say normally what you'd be doing now is you'd be pretty much on your way to the Raya Lucaria Academy. And because uh, that would give you access to that abductor that would send you to the Volcano Manor. Then you would fight a, uh, a Godskin Noble with like a plus three Uchi Katana. Um, so it is very, very time consuming. Yeah, for sure. And uh, just to explain a little bit about those bow cancels that uh, Blanks mentioned, basically how they work is that as you are landing, normally there's sort of a little stopping animation as you uh, as you land but if you are in any weapon animation you will finish your weapon animation instead so it, it was basically created so that you could jump and do a jumping attack and land with a jumping attack but swapping weapons also counts as a weapon animation so we can land with that swapping animation and if we do it at just the right time it cancels the landing and we get to immediately start moving again without having to wait through an entire weapon swing yeah, and, and you would normally, like, depending on the fall distance, you get, like, uh, various numbers of, like, I guess you could call it tiers of, uh, of hard landings, and you can pretty much bypass all of that with a bow cancel, and they're very, very powerful. They're definitely, like, an underrated source of time save, I would say, in this run. Um, but they do have a little bit of a skill ceiling, like Mitch said. It, it is timing-based. You have to time them based on the, the distance of the fall. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be heading towards Fort Height here. Um, you'll see me... You'll see me slashing when I'm jumping on my horse. It kind of makes me land a little bit quicker. Just a tiny little time save there. We're gonna be stopping at this merchant. We're gonna be grabbing ten sleep arrows for this guy or for a boss way later in the game. I will not reveal just yet, um, but just now keep that in the back of your head. We do need these arrows later. I'm going to be taking off my bow as well to uh, potentially get what's called a stand up skip, where when we load back into the game off of a, something like a quit out or, you know, like a warping animation, we have a potential of skipping the uh, actual stand-up animation. And that requires uh, having your bow and your arrows taken off. Um, so yeah, while we're in Fort Height here, we're just grabbing some materials for the run. We're grabbing uh, Blood Roses. We're grabbing, right here is the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook that allows us to craft the Bleeding Grease. That is why the crafting kit's important, because we need that to craft in the skin. Um, and while we are Heading up, we're going to be giving this guy a little bit of a kick in the face, bop, and uh, that will make him not follow us for the climb of this ladder right here, and we will be breaking combat, and we will be completely through Fort Height unscathed. Yeah, we need to break that combat so we can actually warp out, otherwise the game will not let you warp if you are stuck in combat. Yeah. So if we can get the chest skip here, we do land on the chest. Right there, it's a, it's, I don't know what you'd call it, I guess, like, chest skip, but if you land on the chest, you can actually like press the input to uh, open the chest and it'll make you kind of slide off and then you can, you can grab the item before the animation completes. So tiny little time save there. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned before, I took off my bows or my bow and my arrows because there is a little animation here that I want to skip. We're heading up uh, Storm Hill. We're going to be grabbing the Storm Hill Shack side of Grace for later. You could be wondering to yourself why we're not going to be fighting Margit just yet, but if you are unfamiliar with Elden Ring speedruns, we do need our weapon upgraded. Um, it is just way faster to get set up first before you start dealing damage. Um, we only have a plus three Uchi Katana here. We can't really afford to make any detours here just yet. Um, so yeah, what I'm doing there is I'm doing a pivot as I tap the, uh, the button to light the side of Grace, and then I'm opening up my map while I'm pivoting. And then as the, the, the Grace gets lit on my map, I just go ahead and I click on it to confirm the warp. Um, little stand-up skip there. We don't get the stand-up animation. Saves around two seconds as a squirrel is blocking my way, unfortunately. <laughs> we are heading Those towards a uh, small little chasm skip here. Um, we're going to see if I can land it first try. Good. Very nice. nice. So this skip is not necessary. It is way faster. So, I mean, if you do want to save a chunk of time, definitely look into doing that skip. It's not necessary, but... What it does skip is uh, we are able to get into Lyurnia without going through Castle Stormvale. Little known fact, I guess, if you're new to the game, you do not have to clear Castle Stormvale to get to Lyurnia. This find basically enabled speedrunners to, like we just said, get your weapon set up before you're able to fight any of the bosses. Um, this little side path here is, is responsible for like 
90% of the early game of these runs. We're going to be doing a little bit of parkour down these rocks. And now we are on our way to a teleporter. We're going to be teleported to the Rylukari Academy through the Purified Ruins teleporter. Um, and yeah, we're going to be on our way to the, to the blacksmith of the run. Um, and, and people always talk about how setup time in these runs is always like really long and, and, you know, it's not the most entertaining part of the run. But honestly, like this round in particular, the 90% glitchless run, I feel like has one of the most efficient uses of setup time, I guess, out of any category. Because after the 16 minutes of setup is over, we are pretty much set up for the run and it will be a boss rush till the end of the game. Yeah, there definitely is still set up at the start, but it's it, I think it's not as, you know, as bad as it used to be and uh, not as bad as a lot of people will, you know, put on it as though like, oh, this is, you know, terrible run. There's so much setup, but there is interesting tech in it and it does go by relatively quickly as you're doing runs, especially if you're commentating. That makes oh, it go yeah. by way faster. <laughs> Yeah, he basically, uh, he took the teleporter to Raya Lucaria. Not actually go to go to Raya Lucaria at all, but just because it gets us to another teleporter that gets us to EG. And EG is the person who we're going to use to upgrade all of our weapons. He's a blacksmith and is a faster blacksmith to get to than the one in the round table hold, as well as having some materials for us to buy later. Not quite yet, but we'll come back to it. Yeah. So, like, oh, like on that same point that we were talking about with the setup thing, like, I've kind of warmed up. I'm not saying that I've warmed up. I don't like setup by any means, but I feel like this run has a, a very, very efficient setup time because last month I did do a 90% uh, no hit run of this game, and that setup is way longer. The 90% no hit crazy. setup, it has you going to Volcano Manor by uh, taking Raya's hand so you can get the Assassin's Gambit, Ash of War, which basically turns you like invisible. So like getting all that and then plus the weapon for the run, plus the upgrades, that's like a 40 minute setup time. So I, I, I'm honestly thankful for the setup time of this game after doing a no hit run or sorry of this category. I just want to point so, yeah. out, you kind of breeze through it, but uh, that was a that was a clean. There's an invisible wall there that you have to uh, break and then um, quit out immediately. And I just want to point that was really smooth. That's way better than I do. it. I always go around just because that wall gets me stuck so often. Oh yeah, with the with the throwing daggers, I just had this idea one day. I was like, oh, what if I just throw a dagger at the wall? And then I just did it one time and it, it ended up working out. So yeah, so here we're just going to be heading. We're going to be heading through uh, Lyrnia. We have collected both pieces of the Dectus Medallion. We are on our way to the Altus Plateau. And you guys can just see like the, the, the routing at its at its best, honestly. I feel like whoever like was responsible for most of the routing, I know it's not just one person, but like Whoever thought of this route is absolutely like very, very good at what they do because this route, you unlock the blacksmith for the run, you unlock uh, the Grand Lip of Dectus, and you get your, you, you end up getting a grace, like a checkpoint way later in all this plateau, all in like, it, it's just so smooth. As someone who like loves routing and speed runs, like this is a very, very well, well, well routed run. So props to, I think it was Nuclear Pasta Tom and distortion and a few others that uh really were leading the charge on the routing of this run so definitely hats off to them mm -hmm. and uh there we just went by a merchant and blanks picked up a bow so we actually start with a bow with the class that you currently have and in the world record level strategy you can just use that bow for the entire time but the bow that we just bought is a bit faster to fire arrows out and so that'll be very helpful for later when we need to fire arrows out quickly uh, on a boss coming up. Yeah, so um, the changes that they made to bows in Elden Ring, I don't think it's present in any of their Souls game. Maybe Dark Souls 3, I don't really remember. They might have like a rolling arrow or something, but in, in Elden Ring, you have access to not only the rolling arrow, but a jumping arrow and then a sprinting arrow on, the, the, on these short bows. So when the route was first developed, we thought like, oh, you know, like these are definitely like the best bows that you can get your hands on. So we pretty much routed that one right there because that one is very, very efficient. We used our runes from uh, Port Faroth to grab that bow. Um, but yeah, like Mitch did point out, you can just use the longbow, but the longbow is way slower and only has access to that jumping attack. So we are going to be, for consistency's reasons, using the short bow for the entire run. And uh, here we are in about just under 20 minutes. We're in the Altus Plateau. 
like I was saying, this route is about as efficient as Elden Ring gets. Um, yeah, so our goal now is we're going to head towards our uh, checkpoint. We're not going to be heading all the way through to the capital just yet. We need to unlock a checkpoint in the Altus Plateau, and you guys will see um, pretty much like the reason why this category even like works, like this route in particular with the Blood Owns Fang even works. Um, like I was saying, like all the routing just kind of comes together. Um, here we're going to be rounding up the steps of this capital outskirts, capital outskirt ramparts, whatever you want to call it. Um, going to be picking up a couple of golden seeds, just going to be horsing around a little bit more. It's almost over, guys. The horsing is almost over, I promise <laughs> you. Yeah, we have basically set up, so for those four objectives that I talked about, uh, getting our weapon, getting our upgrades, getting runes for levels, and getting access to the later game areas. We basically so far have kind of accomplished one of those. We've got access to Altus, uh, and the next thing that we're going to do is actually to get our runes that we want. So we'll yes. see that. The best way to get runes in this game by far is killing bosses. So there's a boss that we have to kill anyway, and if we kill him early, we get a whole lot of runes that are going to help us uh, to get strong early. Yeah, so one question I get a lot um, when I'm doing these runs, we, we do end up passing the dragon in uh, Grail's Dragon Barrel. I get asked a lot, why don't we kill that dragon? And I mean, that is a valid point because there is the uh, the flail available in one of those chests in the, the, the Gatefront Grace. You could just grab that, slap some bleed grease on it, and I'm sure that would do very, very well against it. I'm sure that would, that would be wonderful. However, uh, the reason why this route works is because this next boss coming up ahead is like, I guess you would you could count it as like a mid late game boss and and people that have like full fully built up characters even struggle on this boss then and, and so that's a very very valid like question um but as you'll see right here this is pretty much the reason why this route works compared to serpent hunter route we would kind of be i think at this point you have like a plus six or like a plus seven serpent hunter and then you come out uh i think it's from the west you come out of volcano manor and you end up around here um, and then you go fight the Dracronic Tree Sentinel. Tree Sentinel, sorry, words. Um, but anyway, you you just fight it straight up. Um, here, you, as, you, as you'll notice, we don't have any runes uh, built into our character. No weapon upgrades. The only thing we have to our name is a plus zero Uchi Katana, some throwing daggers, some bleed grease, and the Radagon Sword Seal. So we're not exactly ready for combat yet so as you guys will see there is a strat here that we are going to do for the boss the dragonic streets are coming up and it is one of my favorite strats of all time pretty much and it makes this run viable and i'm very very thankful that it exists because this this route in my opinion is um i like it so much more um so yeah the idea behind this strat is we're going to aggro the tree sentinel and uh we're gonna kind of uh intimidate him have him uh chase me the idea is to kind of stand like I like to stand this line right here away from the chase us we did get a fireball that's okay we're gonna run towards the edge right here we're gonna parry him and we're gonna knock him off the map goodbye mr draconic tree sentinel it was nice knowing you goodbye tree sentinel <laughs> thank you for the runes so, yeah yep that is a uh, a free fifty thousand runes for for the rest of the run, um, it's going to help tremendously setting up our character. Not having to fight that boss is massive. It's the reason why this run works. Um, so yeah, that was that, that that was that was that was massive. Yeah. So he gives fifty thousand runes, which is enough to get a whole bunch of levels here, um, which basically enables the entire build that we're going to be doing. We also got our golden seeds, so we can get more flask charges and allocate them mostly to mana. We're not expecting to take a lot of damage, but uh, we will need our mana for various weapon arts that we're going to do. And here we're going to use a blood grease and go into the Bloodhound Dairy Will fight. Uh, he drops the weapon we want. It can be pretty scripted if you do it just right, but it is very tight. I on will. Inputs. Yes, I will. I will walk you guys through it. Um, so the idea here, we're going to try to get an unsheath attack on, off on him as he's spawning in. And then in R1, then you want to space these two attacks right here. The second unsheath stuns. Third unsheath, another R1 will stun, and then a fourth unsheath. That oh, is kind of like nice. the. That's like kind of the. 
the gold standard for runs is to get that. There are some wild patterns you can get on this boss, but that's about as best as you can hope for. Um, so that, now we have the weapon for the run, and now we're going back to the Blacksmith EG, and he will be selling us the Somber Synthic Stones that we need for this run. We're gonna grab one through four, and uh, as you guys can tell, Somber weapons are like infinitely easier to upgrade than smithing weapons, because um, right now we have a plus four weapon. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using that to collect another piece of the puzzle. Um, we're gonna be going for the Limgrave Tree Sentinel, and you guys are gonna see the power of the Blood on Sven here in a second. We're gonna jump off our horse. We're gonna go for a weapon art. We're gonna see if we can chain it. We can. Gonna play a little bit safe, go for a stagger, and I will show off the iframes here of the Blood on Ashvor. Looks like I missed. I miscalculated my stamina. That's okay. We just need... Okay, oh, listen. Wow. That is not what I expected to happen, but it's okay. It's okay. I need a second to breathe. Uh, Mitch, you can you can commentate <laughs> while I while I recover myself. Um, so yeah, this is the yeah. Tree Sentinel in Limgrave. Luckily, doing it the second time is the exact same as the first. There's no like downside. We don't need our runes anymore. They're wasted anyway. So uh, basically, yeah. So the goal is basically to get exact hits in to get the stagger that he needs. So you can use the Bloodhound's Fang to iframe through a lot of his attacks. It counts as sort of like the Bloodhound step. Um, and good stagger. Okay. Oh, uh, enough stamina. Nice. Iframe through that big hit and just one more should do it. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Listen, listen, he, he took one off me, but I <laughs> win in the end. I win in the end. That, that's all that matters. Mm hmm. Okay, so we're gonna quit out to make him die a little bit quicker. Could I get the golden halberd? You could be wondering to yourself why we're killing this boss in the first place if it's optional. We need the golden halberd. It's not a weapon that we use for damage, um, but as I head into the stake skip here, I'm gonna be doing a jump. And as soon as the camera goes into death cam, I'll be doing a second jump. And uh, we are going to be intentionally dying and we're gonna be falling down into the Radon's arena. We're gonna be using his stake of America not Stake of America, Stake of America, sorry. <laughs> Stake of America, got it. Falling into his arena and dying on purpose so we can spawn outside the arena as if we had died in the arena. That is called the uh, the Stake Skip. Um, allowed in glitchless runs, one of the more controversial opinions, but I personally am a big fan of it. Anyway, <laughs> heading into the Verdon fight here, um, we're gonna be heading backwards on our horse to deload him. And then when he loads back in, um, he's gonna completely miss his arrow. Um, I'm over here, buddy. Uh, you can you can you can aim at me now, okay? And instead of taking out his bow again, he's going to be heading towards me on his on his on his horse, little Lenny. We want to bait out an attack here. Okay, we didn't get it. That's fine. We can just go out of range for a second. There it is. Okay, so it's gonna be four R ones here. Hopefully, I can get all four. Okay, we did get all four. We're gonna use more Ashes of War. We're gonna try to strafe around him, squeeze it in R1. We need to get two more Ashes of War to bleed up some, build up some bleed and some stagger. Two more R1s, and then one more will stagger. We wanna aim our weapon art backwards, then forwards. Take the repost, and it will be two more to finish him off. And there it is. That is uh, nice. Radon, the Radon one cycle. I'm very, very happy that it went it went well this time. Because yeah, he can sometimes fly tough. away from you. Yeah, the hardest part there is definitely getting the repose there. So that was a beautiful angle to hit his face and get the turnaround to get the repose. It's a very, very small uh, window of where you can stand in to get that. And you don't have a lot of time to get there. So that was an excellent kill. Yeah, so here, sadly, we're going to have to take out our friend our beloved Alexander. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. Miyazaki put the best talisman in the game on your body. Yeah. So anyway, uh, killing Alexander awards you the warrior jar shard, which increases our Ash of War damage by 10%. I do have a guest appearance from Pop Friend. He's still alive, guys. Here he is. He lives on in our soul. Hell yeah. All right. In our soul. Let's go. So we are on our way to uh, Castle Stormvale. Uh, we're gonna be taking that, we're gonna be warping back to the, the Stormhill Shack race. Um, 
We're going to be setting up for Margit. Instead of doing it earlier in the game, obviously waiting until later when we have a plus four weapon, it's going to obviously be way more efficient use of our time. Um, Margit fight your good play pretty quickly. So the idea here is to get a quick stagger and then recover a little bit of stamina and then finish off the fight. Um, so yeah. Um, do you want to explain what's going to be happening in the next couple of minutes, Mitch? What we're, kind of what our goal is of being in the castle in the first place? Yeah, so the whole reason that we are here killing uh, Margit and then Godric after is because in order to access the Lamedell capital, you need two great runes. And so that means that we have to kill two of four, I think technically of five options, but the four main options would be Godric, Radon, Renala, or Rykard. And so... Uh, Renala is through Raya Lucari Academy, just takes a bit too long to get through there. Uh, Rykard is through Volcano Manor, used to be done in the Serpent Hunter route. Uh, but Radon and Godric are both not too difficult to get to, pretty fast to get to using the, uh, the skips and the graces that we already had available to us. So here we basically just go through the main gate of Stormvale Castle, which is very dangerous. We're going to get shot at a lot, but hopefully make it through relatively unscathed into the Godric fight where we can get our second great rune. We already have one from Radon. Yeah. So running through the uh, main gate of Castle Stormvale, the way that you trigger this is by talking to Godstock and telling him, no, I'm good. I won't I won't take your dangerous side path. I'll just go. I'll take my gens up, up through the main gate. Um, as you can see, it is as dangerous as he, as he makes it up to be. Um, coming up here, do a little bit of a timed jump. Gonna trigger both ballistas and then jump. Very nice. And then getting through these last two doors here. And we're pretty much through main gate, I would say. Gonna equip these cookeries here. Barring a birds incident, there are uh, birds here that have very sharp talons. We do not want to mess with them. Um, but yeah, this passage through Castle Stormvale is very, very quick. For those of you on your first playthrough, you probably went through the side passage. Um, it looks intimidating to go through the ballistas, but it is way faster, way more efficient. So we'll be utilizing this main gate here. Um, definitely infamous for, you know, lots of deaths, lots of incidents. Um, but yeah, heading on over to uh, Godric here. Going to be utilizing the Warrior Jar Shard finally, because we did get a Talisman Pouch from Killing Margit. Um, Godric is going to be... He has two different openers that he can do. We will see which one we get, and we have to react accordingly. Um... The idea is to get a charge or two into an R1 and then just some, some couple weapon art attacks. Um, here we're getting the opener one, it looks like. I'm gonna do a charge attack and the axe will fly over my head. We're gonna see if we can space these correctly. Okay, we do get the stagger. Beautiful. Very nice, yeah. The fight's pretty much over at this point. We're going to be triggering the phase transition now, along with the bleed proc. And then we're gonna be quitting out as he dies. And what this will do, is it will speed up the uh, the sequence of him doing a little speech. He says, I'm the Lord of all that is golden. Um, but instead, if you just quit out, you can actually skip all of that. And as soon as you hear the audio cue, you can go ahead and you can warp out. So that's the Godric fight one by pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, now that, like Mitch explained, we have two great runes and we did enter the round table holds. We have we fulfilled all of the prerequisites to enter the capital. Um, we're going to be leveling up our dexterity here, 242. Gonna rune up a little bit into decks. We're gonna be having a little bit of a skip coming up here. Now, there are two ways of doing the skip. I will try to show off both. Um, the first of which I'll be showing off is the more risky variant. Um, but yeah, there are two ways to do the skip. The new way uh, that was found, I, I believe, by Mitch um, during a no quit out tournament, I believe, um, was when they found the uh, the skip that I'm referring to. Um, but yeah, I will try the more difficult version of it uh, coming up here in a second. Um, the goal here is to light the East Capital Rampart Grace, and we want to skip down to the streets of Landell. Uh Instead of just running through the rooftops like normal, um, we're also going to be dropping this Dragon Claw for easier menuing. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be lighting this Grace, then quitting out as we're pivoting. That'll just skip the stand-up animation as we load in. Um, so yeah, uh, do you want to explain, Mitch, I guess... Uh, you know, the the different routes through Landell and which one I'm going to be taking today. Oh, yeah. So basically, the goal is we need to get down to the bottom of Landell in order to get there. And oh, almost first try. Almost so got it first try. 
Yeah, he's trying to land down on this lower ledge so that from there we can jump down without dying from fall damage. Um, it's really tough to do. That's why there's sort of multiple ways to do it. There used to be a super easy way, but it got patched out. And so now we have to land there. Ah, not quite. Still. I will do it like two more times and then I'll do it. Uh, then I'll do it the way that I've been doing it for a while now. Yeah, there is uh, some easier setups that you can use using like exact angles with bows and back steps and things like that. But the fastest way is just to jump off and punch. And if you curve around just right, you can barely land on that little edge. Let um, me cook one more. One more one Let me more. cook. All right. He's got this. He's got this. Here it is. good oh, oh my god okay whatever i'm just gonna do the same way listen yep. the idea is you just land on the platform okay you're not mm -hmm. really missing out on much you just land on the platform <laughs> i tried my best it is what it is okay i will show you guys the consistent setup that i've been using in my own runs because i have a little bit of a skill issue on this version um you want to take out your bow and uh, what i like to do is hold the l2 for mighty shot while aiming with my mouse i'll land on this platform here and i want to aim my compass one tick north of east and then line up my right foot so that it's on this little corner. And then I turn around and then I backstep, then I hold forward on my stick. And that is proved to be near 100% consistency on what, as you guys just saw, is one of the hardest skips for me to pull off consistently. Um, so yeah. Uh, speaking I of, am... he's going right into another ridiculously hard <laughs> skip here. I cannot believe you're going for this in a marathon, actually, but uh, We've got uh, a skip across a bridge, a broken bridge that we call Dist Ruined My Life Skip because <laughs> when it was found, we were all cursing the day that it was found and <laughs> Dist ruining all of our lives with this skip. Yeah, so the way that Dist actually found it is kind of fascinating. He was watching a video uh, by Souls creator Yimfa. I believe is how you pronounce it. It was an Elden Ring video called Elden Ring without moving my left stick. I believe and it was some meme run where you couldn't like move your stick. And so uh, Yimfa pioneered a uh, a skip across the bridge and just kind of looked at that and said, huh, I wonder if I can make that with just jumps. And uh, it turns out you can. Um, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be uh, aggroing this lion and we're going to be putting out to reset that aggro. We'll be grabbing a Hero's Rune 2 for 25,000 runes, I believe. And then we will be doing a sequence of jumps across the bridge. Hopefully, I can get them first try. Um, I am very confident in this skip. We will see how it goes, though. I use the Uchi Katana. Others use their fists for this skip. Um, so yeah, I will see if I can get this first. Let me focus on. So first one, second jump, third jump, fourth jump, and fifth jump. Very oh nice. Oh my god. That nice. was too clean. Wow. Yeah, he did so, not make it look difficult, but trust me, that is one of the hardest skips in the game. I have practiced that for so many hours, and I am not even close to that consistent. That is... See, like, all of those little ledges are so thin, very easy to slip off if you even move an inch left or right. And so you have to kind of get these exact angles as you are doing the jump itself. It is yeah. very fast. Yeah, someone in my chat actually said that, that I used the Uchi Katana. And I was like, I was like, you're, you're crazy. There's no way Uchi Katana is good. And I end up, I, I love it. I, I use it all the time now for the skip. I really love it. Um, so yeah, we're going to be heading into the next boss, uh, Golden Godfrey, the golden spirit form of the uh, Godfrey first Elden Lord boss. This boss is one of the most random bosses of the entire game. I will probably die. I'm just telling you guys right now, we have very little HP. Um, we are going to start out with a Golden Vow to increase our damage by 15% and our, and our defenses by 10. I'll put my full armor set on. I will start out with a Kukuri. We're going to drink a flask. We want to bait out an attack. We got it. Very nice. We need to iframe this attack right here. It's very important. Okay. Looks like we got what we wanted, but we need to bait out a jump. We did get it, but that was not the correct timing that I was looking for. We will go for a weapon right here. Hopefully we can go in and follow it up. Looks like we can. And we can Ooh. just go for it. We can go for another one here. Wait for him to finish his combo. The fight should Beautiful. be over now. Question mark. We will see if I can. Just one hit after. Yeah, yeah, you got this. I'll just do a jump attack. Yeah, normally nice. you can do another weapon art, but I will opt to do a normal attack there. I am also going to quit out here because there's an enemy at the fog gate that wants to get at me so bad. He literally would peek his head in like peekaboo with his with his spear. And if you get close to that, he will hit you through the wall. Um, so we're going to be quitting out there. Yeah, that is Golden Godfrey. I'm so glad that went well, actually. 
And here we are grabbing our uh, Somber Smithing Stone 5. So being in the capital with a plus four weapon is maybe actually slightly uh, less than what you might expect to have at this point in the game. We've kind of been neglecting a lot of the uh, somber stones because they've been a little out of the way, but that one was very close to a boss we needed to kill anyway. We'll get to plus five, and then we'll end up getting the six, seven, eight, and nine uh, all coming up in the mountaintop of the giants. Actually, yeah, is it maybe, to... Sorry, six, seven, and eight. I think the nine is a little after. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to grab uh, the fives and instantly use those to upgrade to plus five. It's a little bit of a safety strat here because the next boss coming up, Morgoth, is a uh, very, very scary in a marathon setting, uh, honestly. Like, he's not like the most scary boss, in my opinion, but like in a marathon where you can't just reset the run when it doesn't go your way, it's very, very scary. So I will just be upgrading to plus five for a little bit of extra insurance. I will also be doing a little bit of a cool RTA strat. You could just quit out, but I will try to sneak past this Black Knife Assassin, make sure I don't aggro it. Very nice. And I'm going to be grabbing the Grace up here. Uh, just in case I die, um, I can retry the fight. Um, I have extra Bleed Grease as well. As long as I have, I believe, one more for Fire Giant, I think I'm good for Bleed Grease. I don't think I use any more. Um, so yeah, if I die, it's okay. I don't need to level save file just yet. I have a couple of attempts. So yeah, Morgoth here is going to be one of the most precise boss strats. I will not be talking through it because I just need to focus here. But uh, I, I guess Mitch can take it away if he wants to. Yeah, the basic thing that we need to do is we need to get an exact number of hits on him so that we can set up a stagger right before he would phase transition. Also using the throwing dagger to keep his posture up so that his stagger won't reset. That was a good attack to get. Okay, one more and we should be able to stagger him. Excellent. So now we're going to take the repost here before he transitions into the second phase. Immediately after, we're going to get a hit while he's standing up, which is not going to phase transition him. Follow up. Okay, he jumps back. That's okay. The next hit is going to cause the phase transition, and then we just need to proc a bleed so that he will die before we do. Right, it looks like I'm doing damage here. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. That is why I did plus I five, by the way. Yeah, Excellent. that's why I did plus five, because uh, what, what can happen there is like like you guys saw, he jumped away from me, which is uh, not good. You want you want him to like try to attack you. That way you can iframe his attack with the follow up weapon art of the Blood on Fang. And then you you will then just like you will you will phase transition him and you could just do two more R1s into a uh, another weapon art for a bleed proc. Um, but that plus five, like I said, is a little bit more insurance, a little bit more safety. Um, so yeah, now we're going to be tasked by Melina our maiden, um, we need to go to the mountaintop of giants. She's going to give us the rolled medallion, okay? We are almost done with our mission as a tarnished, okay? We've pretty much done everything we possibly could. And now the... That's a little bit embarrassing. I didn't use my Godric turn. That's okay. Just going to be using that right now and leveling up. For no one saw that. Um, but yeah, um, our goal now is to go to the mountaintops of the giants because... The lower reason, the lower implication is that uh, the two fingers are, uh, they're not responding to us. They, they, they don't know what to do because uh, they're just confused. And, and they, they, they say that there will not be another Elden, Elden Lord for hundreds of years. And uh, we need to break the cycle now. So Melina hands us the rolled medallion and we're going to go to the forbidden lands of the giants. And we will be setting the earth tree on fire. Doing the skip, skip here one more time. Yep. I, I love this version. It's so clean and consistent for me. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of this. <laughs> so, yeah. Right, so, as we're going there, we uh, <laughs> we are finally going to get our plus six uh, uh, coming up here. And then in the actual mountaintops, we will get the uh, the seven and the eight. Um, I think, Blanks, you do the, uh, the bow shooting the scarab for the eight, right? Yep. Yep. Oh, that one's that one's an interesting. It, is, it uh, is scary. It is scary. I will say on and a reset run because we are going to do a nine minute run and that is at the very end of the nine minute run. So yep. I have practiced that plenty. We're going to hope that the uh, the enemy that's guarding it will not uh, be mean to us today. Um, so, yeah, we're just grabbing a somber smithing stone six and we're going to be grabbing an exalted flesh as well. And uh, we're going to be heading up this elevator. We're going to be taking this lift. Um, for some reason, we can't use our horse on this divine bridge coming up here. I'm going to put out to do a dagger with enemies. But for some reason, we're going to take this elevator up. and We're going to go up to this like divine tower area. And normally you could like ride your horse 
because it's we're kind of like outside the capital. But for some reason, Miyazaki said, you know what? You want to go to the mountaintops? You're going on foot. Hey, so yeah, know, I'm just gonna be just, hopping it's up. It's banned in the capital. They just they they don't allow horses in here. We gotta we gotta follow. This the is a no horse zone. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, we're done. Got kicked out. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So it's gonna be a pretty long run to the elevator. Um, our little old feet can only take us so far for these walkways that were built for giants. Um, but yeah. That is the uh, the little bit of a boss rush, like we mentioned before. After a setup period, you have like it's just back to back. It's Dara Will and the Tree Sentinel, Margit, Godric. Like you just fight all these bosses in a row. And uh, what happens after Morgot is it kind of calms down a bit. We're gonna be doing a little bit more horsing, like you guys saw at the beginning of the run. And uh, this is probably the second longest horsing section, I would say. Hey, how come this guy has a horse? That's not fair. He's breaking the law. Someone arrest him. He's breaking the law. <laughs> How come he has a horse? Okay. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be heading down uh, into the forbidden lands of the giants. Um, it's going to be uh, very snowy and foggy, and there is going to be actually an enemy there that we're going to have to avoid. Um, what I will do, though, I am going to grab the Greystone here. I know that it is a little bit of a time waste, but there is a nighttime boss here that I do not want to die to and get sent all the way back to the capital rampart. So... I will take the five second time loss and I will light this grace. This is not what you would do on a PB attempt by any means. This would just lose you time. Um, but yeah, just going to grab the grace here in case any incidents happen. Um, the way that nighttime bosses work is, uh, you know, as the name implies, you can only fight them at nighttime. Um, right here, we have what's called a Knight's Cavalry, and we have not leveled any HP at all. We don't level HP throughout the entire run. So this guy will literally one shot us with anything. So we're just going to get. Oh. He doesn't even notice us. Okay, oh. even better. Okay. Very nice. Um, but yeah, we're going to be horsing past these uh, vulgar militiamen. Hopefully not getting tagged by them because they also one-shot you. Um, heading up to this skull. Uh, there's going to be a somber smithing stone. Where even am I? Okay. Somber smithing stone 7. I forgot where I was for a second there. Um, so yeah, here he is. Skull emoji. Um gonna be jumping in his jaw getting that somber seven and uh we're entering the back half of the run i would say because once we finish this run up to uh the fire giant the the, the boss guarding the uh mount tops of the giants we will be heading into the other boss rush this game has to offer the end game boss rush so i've been uh honestly kind of stunned with how well the run's been going so far we had that tree sense little incident but uh the run's been going really nice so far yeah, for a marathon run, this is going great. Uh, and you notice there he picked up some freezing grease, which we're going to use uh, for a boss later, uh, where the blood grease that we have been collecting isn't quite as effective on that boss, so the freezing grease will be better. Um, and then we had to do a little skip up to be able to get up onto this lift from down there. Otherwise, we'd have to go all the way around, which is slow and walks right by a boss that wants to kill us. So much safer to jump up there instead. In the mountaintops, uh, it's basically going to be a lot more riding on torrent for a while so um if we have anything else we want to explain that was a good time yeah if you guys need to grab any snacks like get up stretch your legs now is time to do it we have about five four to five more minutes of uh horsing we have one skip coming up a little bit later um but yeah if you guys want to take a quick little like one minute two minute break and then you know we'll, we'll, we'll uh we'll we'll bring you guys back in when we have a skip we're just gonna explain a little bit about the run i guess while we um while we're horsing around it's a beautiful morning here on the mountaintops. Uh, skies are skies are clear. It's a beautiful, uh, what is it? Sunday, Monday morning, whatever day it is in the lands between. Um, yeah, we're just gonna be running across this bridge right here. We're going to be pretty much taking the direct route to the the boss of the area, the the fire giant. Well, I guess we can kind of explain a little bit of the lore. Um, so we need to burn the urchin down, like I explained. Um, the fire giant is a, the uh, the personified version of the fell god, who is the the god of fire. Um, we are trying to, where is it? Can't really see it. There's like a giant bull, pretty much, and the, and that giant bull is where the flame of the giants rests. And what we need to do is we need to get up there, and we need to uh, have Melina ignite the. Uh, the, the Erd tree so we can burn the impenetrable thorns that were present at, after we had killed Morgoth. So 
that's kind of why we're here right now. Kind of the low reason why we're here. Um, but yeah, as you guys see, this is literally like the most hollow and like empty area ever. It's so quiet. There's like barely any enemies. Um, so yeah, trying to find the time to fill the empty air with uh, whatever we can fill it with. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my little bit of a lore explanation there. Yeah, yeah a, a couple of maybe other like speedrun tech that we could uh, talk about. Um, you'll notice that sometimes, not when he's on torrent, <laughs> but on the ground while uh, running, he will be jumping despite just like running somewhere. And that's because jumping is actually slightly faster than running is. Um, specifically, a sprinting jump is faster than sprinting. A walking jump is not faster than walking, but a sprinting jump is a bit faster than sprinting on the way up. So during the jumping animation, you get a little speed boost, but then you kind of slow down while you're in the air. So it's most useful, especially when going up a slope or yep. uh, up a little hill or stairs or something like that. So you'll see that that was done quite a bit throughout the run and will be done later when we're forced back onto our feet again in some of the late game areas. Um, so that's one of the big things that you'll notice. Um, we do have a skip coming up though. Um, oh yes, we do have a skip. We have a skip coming up into a couple minutes. We can, we can go back into that in a second. Um, there's a skip here. We call this like mountaintop skip, mountaintop sledge. I don't even know what you want to call this, whatever. Anyway, we're going to uh, aggro the Frost Dragon Borealis. We're going to quit out because it's Misty and he's going to try to kill us. We don't want that, obviously. We're going to wrap the slope right here. We're going to wedge ourselves in the wall and we're going to hopefully angle our camera correctly. I like to go like one tick south like this. Then I jump up and around the rock. Very nice. Saves nice about skip. like 10, 15 seconds uh, compared to other routes to the mountaintops here. Also found by Dis. Um, Dis playing a very pivotal role in the uh, early days of this run. Uh, him, Mitch, myself, Nuclear Pasta Tom, Chemist, Forza. A lot of people uh, found this category to be so like much better and faster than the, uh, than the original one. And so we all worked very, very hard to optimize it. Um, so yeah. Uh, I guess any any other speed tech you want to discuss before we you know finish off the run to the fire giant? Um, could mention uh, on torrent when torrent actually has the ability to double jump, which is very nice for us, um, and can completely change his momentum during those double jumps. So you'll see that is basically used a lot for skips, such as the one that we just did there, but also for the tree branch skip earlier, where you can kind of jump in one direction and then completely yeah. do a 180 in the air in order to land where we're looking to go. Uh, you're also going to do that, I think, coming up to get to Fire Giant, right? To yeah. climb up yeah. the other wall. Yes. Correct. Um, coming up here, we do have a little bit of like what we did mention before. We have a little bit of a, a, a trick, I guess, uh, kind of a an exploit, I guess, if you will. Um, if you look at our compass at around south where my runes, like that rune icon is laying, there is a scarab on the tree right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim a shot with my bow with my mouse because it's way slower on controller. I'm going to aim with my mouse and I'm going to shoot the scarab out of the air. Like so, we're going to watch it fall for a little bit and then try to run past the hand before he kills us. Take off our arrows. OK, we got our stone. Nice. I can breathe now. We don't have to redo all that all that running if we die. Now, now we have the grace here. If we die to fire a giant, everything is okay. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be just getting our weapon to plus eight now because we have that. That was somber eight stone that we just got. Um, so yeah, this is the the second to last weapon level, I believe. We do end up getting to plus nine. We will need plus nine. Um, that's not the right grace. I tell the forbidden lands. <laughs> I don't need to go there. We need to go to the Forge yeah, of the Giants. Those safety graces messing you up. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do here is a little bit of, as Mitch like just mentioned, uh, we're doing a little bit of uh, parkour here on Torin to get up here a little bit faster. Going to jump up on these platforms here and just jump around and do that little maneuver on Torin. Uh, coming up here, we do have the Fire Giant, one of the uh, more technical fights of the run. Um, we're going to want to target his weak point, which is his foot, his broken ankle. Um, we need to target that. That is his weak point. We're going to use a bleed grease and around this grass patch, we're going to use our golden vow. Do a little bit of a, of a technique on torrent. We're going to call out torrent during the snow shovel that will iframe the attack. Really good opener. I'm a big fan of this one. Going to do a jump attack and break his ankle. Going to do a couple of weapon art attacks to soften it up. And now we're going for a stagger. 
We did get the stagger. We need a little bit more stamina now. Some more weapon art attacks. Hitting that weak spot. Very, very important hit the weak spots. Going into phase two. Very nice. Going to aim a Kukri here at his soft spot. With his eyeball. I think we got it. Bang. You can hear that. Going to do a charge R2 on the arm. Really bad flame spire, but that's okay. Going to hit his head. I'm on the wrong side of his head. A little bit of unlucky RNG there, but that's okay. Going to get a little bit of a weapon R attack on his eyelid. Okay. Oh, still got it. Nice. Just one little hit. Oh, oh, good. Okay, that was a little bit scary when the flame spire was right underneath my feet, but uh, that's okay. A little bit of improv there. Never hurt anybody. So yeah, that's the fire giant fight. That is uh, what we came up with. Um, yeah, Mitch here, one of the runners that worked really hard on that strat. Um, yeah, you, you kind of want to explain a little bit of the uh, the technicalities of the fight, I guess, while I head up to the Forge of the Giants, Mitch. Yeah, so basically that entire fight, in theory, is scripted after the very first attack that he does. Whatever attack he does, you just get the exact same attacks on his ankle that lead into a stagger, that lead into the exact attacks on his ankle to get him into phase two, which lead into the exact attacks to get him to stagger, which lead into the kill. Um, but yeah, basically every single thing is super precise on the stamina. Uh, another speedrun technique that is used is after you use the... Uh, weapon art the ash of war you need to crouch afterwards to start recovering stamina more quickly if you don't crouch it takes a while for the ash of war animation to finish and you don't get any stamina back but if you crouch you start regenerating stamina immediately and you just barely have enough stamina for all the hits that you need to do there so it's a it's a hard strat it's a precise strat and i honestly cannot believe that blanks got to the eye from the wrong side of the fire giant's head i have never seen that before i don't think i've seen anyone do that backup that was wild to see there <laughs> yeah so i, I kind of prepared for that like because the the flame spire spawning in a bad spot is actually like more common than you would think like if you spam attempts like i do that happens like a couple of times a day for me so i just prepared that backup you just want to hit the eyeball and then you you just committed the follow-up it'll hit him in the eyelid it won't hit him in like the actual like soft spot of the eye um but it's okay there um so here we're doing another bow cancel from very high up we are in fair missoula the second to last area of the game uh it's basically that area that you see with a giant typhoon spinning up that is fair missoula um, we're gonna be doing a little bit of bow cancels here gonna be very careful not to die of these beastmen because we are in literal end game these guys will one shot me so i will quit out on this guy to avoid a certain death i am opting to use the dragon claw great shield and it's actually one of the uh most asked questions as of recently because i started doing runs again and as of recently i i have been asked a lot why do i use the shield at this point in the game and the reasoning is very simple it's not for the defenses not for anything other than it just being one uh downwards input to the blood ounce fang <laughs> um so yeah literally that's the only reason doesn't it's not for like style or not because it has more defense it's literally just because uh it's just one downwards input to Blood Ounce Fang. It'll be easier at menuing for the boss coming up. It does yeah. also have style points. So. It does. It does look better than the, the regular wooden shield the Samurai class starts with. So yeah, here we're going to head through the, uh, the lag valley in a second here. No matter how good your PC is, you will lag at this part right here. For some reason, the uh, lightning effects right here will lag my PC. Huh. Oh. Okay, we made it through. Very nice. Okay. Gonna do a few more bow cancels. We're going to be heading down these broken fragments of Faramazula. Do some more bow cancels. Wow, that was actually a really good one. That one I don't normally land. Yeah, um, you canceled the hard fall because you took damage, but uh, no lag on it. So that was really oh, good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so here we are grabbing a somber th so I think so nine. That'll be really good for our Blood on Sfang. You could argue that it's, it is a bit slow, um, but... We do actually need it for the boss coming up. Otherwise, it wouldn't be as clean of a one cycle. Um, so yeah, coming up, we have the infamous Godskin duo. One of the mm -hmm. hardest fights to, uh, to to get down and practice, I guess. I don't know. They are very, very scary for me. And I'm going to really hope that it goes well for us here. Excuse me. Because if we do fail it, we do have to load up a save file. We're going to be using sleep arrows that I only have 10. Um, so it's very important that we do get this first try. I'm going to really hope that we can get the sleeps quickly. And the idea here is to get them slept away from each other. That way we can deal with them separately instead of dealing with them both together. 
Um, so yeah, gonna be getting the bad attack on the uh, the the forbidden knight. Gonna be doing a bow cancel in the arena. Not gonna hit it. That's okay. Um, so the idea here is to use the fast bow move set of the composite bow. You do two jump attacks. I, did, I get an instant sleep. That's uh. Wow. I can't tell if that's really good or really bad. I haven't really practiced that. You may ah. Uh... If okay. that had not well, happened, you may have wanted to go for the throwing dart strat, but uh, yeah, we have yeah. Uh, five arrows, so I can't, I can't do this fight. I have to load up a save file. That is like the one thing I really did not want it to have happen in this run. Um, unfortunately, we did pull up a save file. Very, very cringe of the Godskin duo to do that to me, but it's okay. Um, we have a save file ready here uh, with the arrows filled up for us. Um, very, very unfortunate, I will say. That is like the one thing. There's one more thing, but that was like the one thing I did not want to have happen on this run. Um, but yeah, a little bit of a skill issue there. It's fine. We will just get right back into it. Nothing's different about the safe out. It's just the fact that I have technically a different in game time. But yeah, first sleep. The idea here is to get them slapped away from each other. And uh, this is not great positioning because there is the tail right there of the noble. I would try my best to make do with what I have anyway. Should be fine. We're gonna try to push him to the left here. Okay, it didn't really work, but that's okay. Okay. We're gonna see if we can get the phantom hits here on his dead body without aggroing the noble. Okay, we did get nice. it. We wanna get a stagger here. Hopefully I get a repost. I do get the repost, okay? Yes. And this should be it. We will see. We want to get the phantom hits off and... Yes, I heard the uh, nice. the death animation. So the way this fight is handled, uh, it's the way that From Software handles most of their duo bosses, is there's actually a Godskin Apostle underneath the floor taking all the damage that you do to them uh, to their collective health bar. And as soon as you drain their collective health to zero, they will both die instantly. Um, and that, that, that's why uh, they could both be alive and you just dealing the final blow will kill both of them is because that Apostle underneath the floor did take lethal damage. Um, so yeah, that's how you can kind of tell if they die. If you can hear that death animation underneath the floor. Um, cool little From Software fact. On our way past Godskin Duo, on our way to Malaketh, the Black Blade, one of the final bosses of the run. Um, we're going to do a little bit more uh, bow canceling. We have something coming up called uh, Bird Skip where you do a skip to get around this running section that involves a dragon that shoots lightning and fire at you and a bunch of birds. So we will uh, we'll be skipping all that, thankfully, with the skip that was found. Um, we are also skipping a somber something stone 10. However, it's not worth it. But I think nine in itself was already kind of a uh, questionable because it does take an extra like 10 seconds. Um, but something 10 is out of the question. We don't we don't need somber 10. Um, but yeah, here we're doing more bow cancels. I'm jumping over this little ledge here. Very thankful of Miyazaki to put all these uh, railings here to jump over. Thank you, Miyazaki, for allowing me to skip your level. Um, so yeah, taking this elevator up, we're going to be uh, running past this beast man right here. Um, this guy is pretty dangerous. He will one shot us. I will try to avoid him as best as I can. No promises, though. We got decent RNG, I guess. Going to be bow canceling down this little lip. And we're going to do a little bit of a uh, parkour here across these uh, these lips. And we're going to be successfully clearing uh, nice. what's called bird skip. And this will pretty much put us right in front of the, the walkway to Malaketh. What looks like a highway uh, running up into the boss arena. So, yeah, you want to give a little bit of background on the Malaketh strat? Oh, Come boy. Here. Oh, boy, the Malaketh strat. It's my favorite. Uh it, yes, it's all of our favorite. Uh, so basically, the Malaketh strat that we figured out is if he charges at you, uh, he will Im always follow that up with specific attacks, assuming that you can stay at the correct range in front of him. So, since we know exactly what attacks he's going to do, assuming he runs at us at the start, uh, we have scripted out exactly every single attack in both Phase 1 and Phase 2, to the point that it can be done blindfolded. Um, <laughs> Famously, you know, uh, by somebody. 
Someone. Somebody. Knows. Somebody at GDQ at by the name of Mitch Riz. I don't know who that guy is. Uh, <laughs> but basically, we are really, really hoping that he's going to charge at us, and then we just have to time all of our inputs correctly, and we will get a nice scripted kill. If he doesn't run at us, there are some possible backups, but they're a, a whole lot worse. So we hope he charges. Okay, we did good. get the charge. That's really good. So we're going to tank and attack here on purpose, which it looks really scary. We are set up for phase two now, if we can get the stagger. We do get the stagger. Very nice. Okay. So we're going to take the repost here. And when we transition him to phase two, we will be teleported to a different location in the arena. As we skip the cutscene, we're going to crouch, walk. As soon as his feet leave the ground, do a charge R2. We're going to do a weapon art. Okay. Oh. That is not how it's supposed to go, but it's okay. Um, I'm going to quit out here. We're going to restart the fight. That was uh, not how I intended that to go. Um, I've never seen this like, before. It looks like I don't have enough HP to tank the opener, so I have, I have two options. I can either go back to the grace or I can load a file. I think what I'll do is just load up a file here, just make it a little bit, little bit less time consuming. Um, so yeah, there I made a little bit of a mistake, a little bit of skill issue there on my part. Um, so yeah, the idea is once you get the charge, once you get the charge R2, once you set up for phase two, it's pretty much over. You just, it's just a matter of uh, doing the script properly. We're gonna see if we can get it again. Um, you wanna drink your flask at a certain point. It's around right there. We didn't get the charge this time. There he goes. We got it this time. Okay, well, listen. A little bit of a skill issue the first time, but this time I promise you, I promise you, I will do, I will, I will get it done. Surely Going into phase time. two, we're gonna crouch, we're gonna walk. As soon as the feet leave the ground, this time I actually do. I'm doing it on the correct queue, and uh, we're gonna do a follow up. We're doing a throwing dagger, and that is actually required. If we don't use the throwing dagger there, he will not die. So that is required to throw the throwing dagger at him before the repose to make sure that he goes down. Um, so yeah, if you tried to do an R1, it would be too slow. So you really need that throwing dagger for the quick little damage. Yeah, I, I apologize for the uh, the use of save files. I, I didn't want to have it come to this, but there are a few things in the run that if they go wrong, you will have to load up save file. I do apologize. I really, really wanted to get a clean run without any of that. But um, I mean, so far it's been it's been relatively clean, so I, I can't really complain. This run does have a lot of RNG in it. Um, so yeah, heading into the uh, Ashen capital of Landell. Uh, this is the final area of the game of the uh, the main the main story. We did we burned the entire Erd tree to the ground pretty much, um, and now those Reminder impenetrable of the, thorns. Uh, safety, if you want it. Yep, I'm gonna be grabbing this um, this rune arc here for extra HP. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be heading through the final final area of the game. Um, we're going to fight an infamous boss. Uh, not only for his yapping, but also for his uh, danger in, in, in a speedrun sense. Like you see these runs all the time and we kill him instantly, but uh, he is very, very dangerous. So hopefully we can get the fight to go our way. Um, we're going to be popping a freezing grease on the elevator here, and uh, I will be using a golden vow in the fight. He has a little bit of a speech. This is Gideon the all-knowing. Um, he likes to yap a lot, so the idea is to golden vow in the fight to kind of stall a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually miss intentionally our weapon art and then close the gap and then follow it up. And what that's going to do is we're going to be able to get behind him and backstab him. So that's going to be really important. We get sad state of affairs. Trigger his AI. Go for the backstab. And now we want to dead angle him. We're going to perform what's called a dead angle. So we're going to hit him. And basically what's going to happen is AI does not really know what to do because we're kind of like behind him, but also at the same time we're like we're like we're like positioning at a certain point where he can't really react to us. So that's what's called a dead angle. Um, we did perform the Gideon clean kill. That is the second boss that you literally would have to load a save file if you messed it up. So I'm glad that that went well. One of the two things went well that we wanted to, to have go well on this run. So I am very thankful for that. Thank you, Gideon. A um, little bit of yapping there from our boy Gideon. Um, Coming up here, we have Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, the real one this time, not the uh, the Golden Spirit. This one's a bit different. We're not going to be using weapon arts as much on the opener. The idea here is to get a stagger off on him as quickly as possible. And we're going to be grabbing this race here for safety. If we don't, we will end up on the beach 
um, the the I guess the Ash Beach. Um, if we do end up dying, so I will be grabbing this graves for safety. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, going for a stagger, and we're going to use a mechanic where a boss will they'll hold their poise damage build up into second phase. We're going to try to make make use of that on this fight. Um, so yeah, we're going to be bringing a flask here. We're going to be getting our armor on. Um, so yeah, I will try to focus up for this fight. This is Godfrey first Elden Lord. Let's hope we can get it. Yeah, he's basically trying to bait out specific attacks that he can get charged attacks on in order to get a ton of posture damage. So if you can circle around behind, he can get those. Keeping the posture up with the throwing dagger, very important. Not getting lucky follow-ups here. This is a very, very unlucky first phase so far. That's a good one. Okay, hopefully one more. That should work. Get the stagger, one more hit into the repost. And now I need using... I need two weapon arts here, and then I'll, I will I will roll, and then I'll do two more. So the issue arises: we don't have golden bow anymore. That's kind of a problem. We're going to be lacking a little bit of damage here. That is why it is very important to get those attacks off in first phase. Um, we are missing stamina as well, so this is going to be a little bit of a improvised fight. I feel. Okay, so here's uh, what we'll do. You have to roll, yeah. We'll do some jumps, then we'll see what part finished off. Nice, like, excellent. That was not uh, that was not as clean as, as I wanted to go for GDQ, but that's okay. That is Godfrey down. Um, like I mentioned, this run does have a lot of RNG elements to it, but part of it is learning to roll with the punches and to, you know, uh, survive through the strats anyway. Um, but I, I am thankful that we got to show off the, uh, the Godfrey strat in first phase. That was really nice. And now we're heading towards the final bosses, Mitch. Um, as we were practicing during warm up, I was expressing how it was uh, it was not going the way that I thought it was going to go. But <laughs> hopefully I can show off a finally a clean boss for you guys. We'll not have any any memes happening. Hopefully we'll see how it goes. Radagon, yeah, Radagon. here is uh, he's scripted. Um, you can talk us through it, Mitch. He's basically scripted, kind of the same thing as Godfrey first phase. We want to get a stagger at a very particular time. We're going to do that through these Ash of Wars. Oh, a miss there. I think That's I did okay. Miss We've one. got another yeah. one. Huh? Oh, ho, ho, ho. that was a nice hit. All right, so from here, everything is basically scripted. We know he's going to stomp next, so we have time to get our mana back and do an Ash of War here. Then we can roll through the follow up and hit him a couple times. And then we know he's going to do his final transition, which is two really big uh, stomps, jump over both of them, and then finally stagger him out of the last one. Weapon art through, and I frame through the end, and then buff up before Elden Beast. Elden Beast is another very particular strat where you need exact amounts of stamina. If he's only a few frames off, it could fail. So hopefully he can get it. We did get a pretty decent spacing on the opener there. The idea here is to have enough stamina for a charge attack. I think I got it there. I we need a charge perfect. attack and two weapon arts. Gonna aim downwards. Gonna stagger nice. him out of the swim. Gonna go for a very specific stamina lineup once again. Gonna go for two more. Wait a little bit on the repose for a little bit of stamina. And I think I might have been a little bit too early there. Doesn't really matter though. It's okay because we have this final combo. We're gonna roll that, swing once. Do up hard to finish it. And there it Beautiful. is, guys. That is Elden Ring, any percent glitchless. I will call time for you guys when it says Elden Ring text on the screen. Um, but yeah, that's Elden Ring, any percent glitchless, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the run. I will let you know when time is coming up. Um, we've completed our quest of Tarnished. We are the Tarnished warrior that became the Elden Lord. Time is going up here after this cutscene on the Elden Ring text. There it is. Time. GG. We did it. Let's go! All right. Well, I mean, that wasn't that wasn't too bad. A little bit of skill issues in the end game, but that was about as clean of a showcasing as I was hoping for. Um, we had a little bit of trouble the last couple of days when I was practicing on my stream. We're having a little bit of difficulties getting those those late game bosses down, but um, hopefully I showcased the run for you guys and it, and it was entertaining for you guys to watch. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my commentary alongside Mitch. It was a lot of fun to do. Um, so yeah, any closing words, guys? 
It was a lot of fun. Just shout outs to the uh, Souls community, the Elden Ring community, finding this new cool route and constantly evolving and updating things over time. And if that looked interesting to any of you out there, feel free to, uh, you know, join the Discord, submit your own runs. It's a, it's a fun run. There's a lot of different categories in Elden Ring. If maybe this one wasn't, you know, exactly your cup of tea, there's a lot of things out there. And yeah, just shout outs to the community. Yeah, and uh, if you guys want to see us when we stream, um, personally, uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash blanks, B-L-A-N-X-Z, and uh, Mitch Riz as well. We both stream, we both play Outen Ring, we both like Souls games, we both like Souls likes. If you guys like Souls like content, please check us out. Also, like Mitch said, check out the Souls Fearing Wiki. Um, has every single Souls game, Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, Bloodborne, Outen Ring, um, Demon Souls. If you guys want to run any of those games, please check us out. Um, and yeah, thank you very much to GDQ for having us for the event. I had a lot of fun uh, preparing and commentating and, you know, participating myself. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you for having us, guys. For having us, guys. Yes, thank you both so much for being on. Uh, absolutely amazing game playing commentary from both of you. Uh, I know you just said it, but yeah, seriously, check both of these uh, runners out if you like Elden Ring. Uh, both very great runners. And uh, yeah. I mean, you should you should be checking out all of our runners from yesterday and today. They're all amazing Souls-like runners, but yeah, definitely check these two out if you're interested in Elden Ring content. Uh, again, thank you so much for being on, for showcasing. Uh, we do have of course. one more run for y'all tonight. We have Sekiro, all bosses, all Ooh. mini bosses. So we're going to take a quick break for that, and we'll be back with our final 